my friends. Welcome to you all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride. Another episode here on our journey through the fascinating world of economics and investing. I'm your host, Jerry Robinson, economist, investor, and author, here to guide you through the currents of the financial markets with insight and foresight. Now, today we find ourselves at a remarkable juncture in the history of our financial markets. For the first time ever, the S&P 500 index has soared above the 5,000 mark. That's a milestone that marks not just a number, but a testament to the resilience of the U.S. stock market and the companies that propel it forward. And as if in some sort of synchronized dance, Bitcoin, the largest digital currency in the world, has captured the imagination of investors all around the world, uh, has made a triumphant return to $50,000, reminding us of its undeniable influence in the modern investment landscape. Now, in today's episode, which is, by the way, episode number 456, it's entitled Navigating the 2024 Bull Market. We're going to dissect these big events. We're going to begin by exploring the forces that are propelling the S&P 500 to these new heights and uh, what drives this bull market, and more importantly, can it sustain this pace? Then we'll also shift our focus to Bitcoin later in segment two, this digital currency that has weathered so many storms to reclaim its spot in the limelight. What lessons can we draw from its resilience, and how should investors approach this volatile yet very potentially rewarding asset? And then we'll finally wrap up with a summary of our discussion and some concluding thoughts to help you the investor navigate these exciting times, whether you're a seasoned market veteran or whether you're new to the world of investing, understanding the dynamics at play in today's bull market is crucial for making informed decisions. So buckle up and let's embark on this journey together. Remember, in the realm of investing, knowledge is not just power, it's profit. Now, before we dive in, I want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast if you haven't already. And if you find today's episode insightful, consider sharing it with a friend or on social media. Your support means a lot to us, and it helps us reach more people eager to navigate the complexities of the financial world. With that said, let's get started in our deep dive into the S&P 500's historic rally and Bitcoin's big comeback. friends, welcome back to the program. Let's dive straight into the heart of our financial universe. That is the S&P 500 index right here in the United States. This index is often seen as the best representation of the U.S. stock market, and it has recently made financial history by crossing the 5,000 threshold. And while 5,000 is just a round number, it is psychological in nature, and it's also a beacon, I would say, to the market's vitality and the rising economic optimism that's been pervading investors. But first, let's understand why this is significant. The S&P 500 index is not just any index. It encompasses 500 of the largest companies listed on U.S. exchanges and represents approximately 80% of the total market capitalization of U.S. companies. So when we talk about the S&P 500, we're talking really about the heartbeat of American enterprise. Now, what's driving this historic rally? Well, several factors come to mind. To start, economic recovery in the post-pandemic era, which has been faster than many had anticipated. We've seen businesses adapting much better than some had expected. Uh, consumers have certainly returned in full vengeance over the last couple of years. And sectors like technology, especially AI, artificial intelligence, have seen exponential growth. And then there's the role of monetary policy. You know, while interest rates remain elevated here in the U.S., the Federal Reserve has made it clear that it has concluded its rate hiking campaign and it's prepared to begin cutting rates later this year. Now, the rate cuts are not here yet, of course, but just the fact that the Fed has said it is done with its rate hiking campaign, that has provided a pretty big relief. Or, you know, we've seen the market take a sigh of relief, really, from that expectation of potentially higher rates. And let's not overlook the influence of technological advancements. You know, the last few years have underscored the importance of technology in our lives from how we work to how we communicate. Companies at the forefront of these changes have seen their valuations skyrocket, contributing significantly to the index's performance. Now, of course, with every summit comes the risk of a fall, and the market's extraordinary performance has led some to question its sustainability. 
concerns about lingering inflation, the timing of the Fed's interest rate cuts, and continual geopolitical tensions still loom large. So while the bull charge is ahead, caution remains a prudent companion for every investor. So therefore, I should add that while this market is certainly overbought in the near term and due for a healthy pullback, the rally itself in the S&P 500 is young. You know, after all, the S&P 500 just crossed above its 2021 peak around four weeks ago. So I certainly remain bullish on the S&P in 2024. I do expect some turbulence in the near term based upon the current overbought conditions. After all, nothing goes up in a straight line forever. So we definitely should expect some selling at some point. We've had a very robust rally up until this point. And that brings us to another important question is how should investors be navigating this market? Well, in our opinion, diversification is absolutely key. So beyond the allure of high flying tech stocks and AI stocks, there's value to be found across sectors and industries. There's always the risk also of FOMO, which is known as the fear of missing out, as many investors have been sitting on the sidelines. In fact, currently there's about $8.7 trillion sitting in money market funds and CDs that much of that money will eventually trickle back into the stock market because money, this is kind of a law that I've learned over time, is that money flows to the rate of highest return. And so we certainly will see some more inflows into the market this year, I believe. That will serve as a catalyst higher. Uh, Coupled with those lower interest rates, that's certainly going to also lift uh, the market higher over time. Now, in my opinion, the key here is to maintain a diversified portfolio. And when it comes to stocks, that means having a diversification across several sectors and industries, not just all in one area, not just in one industry or one sector, but to have some diversification. And some of the areas of the market that have really been beaten down that we think could enjoy some upside ahead in 2024 include things like U.S. small cap stocks, which really had a great end of the year in 2023, but overall still remain, you know, very depressed compared to, you know, the S&P 500, for example, or larger cap stocks. Also, there's spaces like real estate investment trusts and even renewable energy, which have really not participated in this big, robust rally that we've seen. You know, the market is always offering opportunities to those who are willing to look. And in fact, I would encourage you, if you missed our one of our recent episodes, episode number 453, just a few weeks ago, uh, it was entitled the 2024 Market Outlook. There we shared three markets that we expect to outperform uh, this year in 2024. So I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. We have you know some great ideas in there, I believe. And, you know, moreover, while the rally invites celebration, obviously, it also calls for discipline. Setting clear investment goals is vital. Maintaining a long term perspective is very important and not letting the euphoria dictate your decisions. These are all vital strategies in this environment. So to sum up, the S&P 500's journey beyond 5,000 is a milestone that I believe is worth noting. And it reflects a confluence of economic recovery, technological innovation, and a rising market optimism or sentiment. However, in this exhilaration, let us not forget the wisdom of measured, informed investing. As we continue to witness this historic rally, remember, the most successful investors are those who plan for tomorrow, not just for today. Now, as we wrap up our deep dive into the S&P's historic rally and the broader implications for investors, it's crucial to pause and reflect on how this information translates into action in your own financial journey. You know, the thrill of market highs can sometimes lead to impulsive decisions, but true wealth is built through patience, discipline, and strategic foresight. So before moving on, I encourage you to ask yourself a few critical questions, and these are designed to anchor your investment philosophy in the principles of long-term success and to resist the allure of short-term speculation with your long-term investment portfolio. So question number one that you can ask yourself is, what are my long-term investment goals and how do my current actions align with achieving them? Question number two, how do I react to market volatility and what can I learn from my past responses? You know, you want to reflect on your emotional responses to market ups and downs. That can help you develop a more disciplined investment approach. Question number three, am I adequately diversified or am I overexposed to any single asset class or sector? Again, diversification is a key strategy for managing risk over the long term. Question number four, what is my plan for when the market corrects and how can I ensure that I stick to it? You see, you need to have a predefined plan that will help you prevent impulsive decisions during the inevitable market downturns that lie ahead. 
And the fifth and final question for you is, how often do I review my investment portfolio? And am I making adjustments based upon market noise or based upon my long-term financial objectives? You know, regular reviews are essential, but they should be focused upon strategic adjustments rather than simply reactive changes. So these questions are not just queries, they're tools, tools that can help you refine your investment strategy, enhance your financial literacy, and ultimately become a more successful investor. Remember, the journey to financial independence is not a sprint. We have said this many times. It's a marathon, and it's the strategic, well-thought-out decisions that will lead you to the finish line. So as we transition to our next segment, keep these questions in mind. They're not just for today, but for every step of your investment journey. Stay tuned. We're going to be exploring Bitcoin's remarkable comeback and what it means for investors navigating this bull market on the other side of this break. Hold tight. Welcome back to Follow the Money Weekly. And here's Jerry Robinson. All right, welcome back, friends. In this segment, segment number two now, we are going to turn our attention to a phenomenon that has captivated investors and skeptics alike, and that is Bitcoin, which was once regarded as the digital Wild West. And now Bitcoin has made a roaring comeback with its price surging above the $50,000 level earlier this week amid historic ETF inflows and just ahead of the upcoming Bitcoin halvening, which is where the blockchain reward, the Bitcoin reward that is put out to miners each and every day is going to be cut in half from 900 per day to 450 per day. So it's basically a 50% production cut for freshly minted, freshly mined Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's journey confirms the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies. We've seen these dizzying highs, we've seen dramatic lows, and the path has been anything but linear. Yet here we are, witnessing a remarkable comeback that underscores a growing acceptance of digital currencies in the global financial system. So what's fueling this resurgence? Well, there's several factors at play here when it comes to Bitcoin, something we've been talking about here on this broadcast now for over a decade. Many of our members knew about Bitcoin well before the mainstream ever even began talking about it. Now, again, several factors are driving this current price uh, surge in Bitcoin. First, we have increasing institutional interest. We have major corporations, financial institutions, not just exploring, but actively investing in Bitcoin, which is lending it legitimacy and stability that it lacked back in its earliest days. And then so, too, we have the recent approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which has been a major price catalyst as of late. In fact, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the new spot Bitcoin ETFs, which we believe is a watershed moment here for the digital asset space. Back on episode 454, we called that the crypto revolution. That was just a few weeks ago. Be sure to check that out if you haven't heard it. Now, there was a very interesting uh, media interview just the other day that I caught. It was on CNBC and it was with uh, the guest was Anthony Pompliano, uh, who is the founder of Pomp Investments, and he laid out the bullish news regarding Bitcoin's rising popularity among Wall Street institutions. And I'm going to play you a little clip from that video. Uh, roll the tape. I mean, look, the verdict's in, right? Uh, Wall Street doesn't just like Bitcoin. They love Bitcoin. If you think of these assets, uh, there's been over 5,500 ETF launches in history. Never have we had a fund get to $3 billion in AUM in the first 30 days. BlackRock and Fidelity both just did it. So two for the first time in history. And then if you look at Bitwise and 21 shares, uh, ARK, they're both going to hit a billion dollars this year or uh, this week. And so now you have four funds that are going to hit a billion dollars of inflows. But the most interesting part of this is the inflows. I mean, doing, these funds are doing $500 million a day of net inflows. But there's only 900 Bitcoin that is actually coming into the daily incoming supply. And so when you look at that, it's like 40 to $45 million. There's 12 and a half X more demand for Bitcoin than what's being produced on a daily basis. So how much of this do you think is being generated by the ETFs themselves? Well, I mean, you just measure the actual net inflows, right? right? And so you can just see there is way more buying pressure. So you're saying 3 billion for BlackRock, 
There's four billion now for BlackRock, three and a half for Fidelity, oh. and then you've got uh, Bitwise and 21 shares will both hit about a billion uh, this upcoming week. Okay, so this is really powerful information that many people probably aren't aware of, but the Bitcoin ETFs, these new spot Bitcoin ETFs, have shattered records for net inflows for the first 30 days, as he had just mentioned. Major players like BlackRock and Fidelity, you know, reaching three billion plus dollars in assets under management within the first 30 days. That is historic. We've never seen anything like that before. And we just basically have this monumental shift signaling a broader acceptance of Bitcoin as a legitimate asset class. And this is another thing that the mainstream media just still doesn't seem to get. When you watch these interviews, for example, on CNBC or Bloomberg, unless the, the, unless the interviewer has some sort of frame of reference for what Bitcoin really is, they just don't seem to understand why this is happening and why the asset is at $50,000. And the reason, of course, is the fact that Bitcoin's strong and growing demand is facing a limited supply with a declining inflation rate, right? So the current daily supply of Bitcoin before the halvening, which is coming up in late April of this year, the current daily supply, is, as you just heard, is 900 Bitcoin. And that's the natural inflation rate right now. But that inflation rate of 900 fresh Bitcoin being mined by the miners who secure the network every day is going to be slashed in half in April with the Bitcoin halvening. So not only will this upcoming event slash Bitcoin's inflation rate by 50%, but it's also historically coinciding with the massive price surge as investors anticipate a decline in the new supply. So you have all of this investment demand and all of these new on-ramps for people, retail investors, institutional investors to invest in this burgeoning new, new asset class. And you have a reduction, a 50% reduction in the, uh, in the production of Bitcoin. I mean, if you had a commodity out there that you know, was going to, if you knew for a certainty that it was going to be cut in half as far as the amount of production, well, what would you expect the price to do, right? It makes total sense. So with the production rate getting ready to be cut in half, we obviously expect the price to go higher. Now, you also have not just that, not just the supply demand dynamics with the new spot Bitcoin ETFs now really, you know, as as you heard in the interview, 12 and a half times, uh, you know, the demand based on the current supply that's being pumped out by the miners on a daily basis. But then you have another key driver, and that is the global economic climate, right? So in times of uncertainty, with concerns over inflation, the devaluation of fiat currencies, Bitcoin is emerging as a digital safe haven for some investors. That finite supply contrasts sharply with government currencies, which can be printed at will, making Bitcoin an attractive hedge against inflation for those who are wary of traditional assets. And then, of course, we have to look at the role of technology and accessibility, right? So advances in blockchain technology and the increasing ease of buying and selling cryptocurrencies have lowered the barriers to entry. So this is enabling more people to participate in the crypto market than ever before. Now, with opportunity comes risk, right? So Bitcoin's volatility is legendary, capable of rapid swings that can test the resolve of even the most seasoned investors. And I've sat through all of it, you know, over the last decade plus, probably been 12 years now. You know, regulatory uncertainty also looms large. Governments around the world are grappling how to manage and tax and regulate digital currencies like Bitcoin. So how should investors approach Bitcoin? Well, as we've often said, with caution and strategy, right? So diversification remains crucial here as well as it does in other asset classes. So Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies can be a part of a well-rounded portfolio. We believe that. We, in fact, practice that. But they should not dominate your portfolio, in our opinion, right? So you want to understand your risk tolerance. You want to do your own homework, your own due diligence, and you want to consider how these digital currencies may fit into your broader investment goals. So, you know, Bitcoin's big comeback here is more than just a story about its price. It, it's a chapter in the ongoing evolution of finance, quite frankly, where digital currencies are increasingly part of the conversation. And as we navigate this new landscape, the principles of thoughtful investment remain unchanged. Research, diversification, and a clear-eyed view of risk and reward.
You know, I just want to add here that since first alerting our members to Bitcoin well over a decade ago when it was trading for, you know, less than $100, we have continued to raise our price target. And since then, you know, every price target we have issued to our members has not only been hit, but it's been exceeded. And we maintain a Bitcoin price target now of $275,000 by the end of 2025. Now, I know that sounds wild. I know that sounds, you know, maybe crazy to some of you. And maybe it is, right? We, we Of course, we could be wrong. But if we're right, this means that Bitcoin could rally another 450% or so over the next few years. Time will tell. But we we do expect by the end of 2025 to see that price reached. Again, we could be wrong. Who knows? We'll find out. Time will tell. But to help you fine-tune your approach to investing in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, I encourage you to ponder a few key questions, just like we did in segment one. Let's, let's ask a few questions of ourselves here uh, when it comes to Bitcoin and digital currencies in general. You know, these questions are meant to guide you towards thoughtful, informed decisions that align with your long-term investment goals. That way, you're not going to be swayed by the highs and lows of the market. So question number one, how well do I understand the underlying technology of cryptocurrencies? And am I comfortable with the risks associated with digital assets, right? So you really want to assess your knowledge base here, and you really want to consult your risk tolerance. Question number two, in what ways can cryptocurrencies complement my existing investment portfolio, right? They really can enhance your portfolio if it's something that you want to have in your overall long-term portfolio. Uh, question number three, what percentage of my investment capital am I willing to allocate towards cryptocurrencies considering their volatility? Now, this is a really big question because many times people will see something that they like and they'll say, well, okay, I'm just going to put all my money into it. Yeah, that's not a really good idea, huh? That's not, that's not a really good way to, to approach investing. So instead, you want to have a percentage. And we've been telling you for a long time, we've been telling our members for a long time, we have a 5% allocation to digital assets. For some people, that sounds small. It used to sound very, very large to many people. They thought, "What? You're going to put a whole five cent, uh, you know, whole five cents out of every dollar into digital assets?" And a long time ago, that was considered extreme. You know, today, I think it's probably considered very conservative. We think that five percent uh, is good for us. It's been that way for you know a decade, and that's where we stay. But again, what's your number? How much are you willing to put in to that particular space if you want to invest? And I would encourage you to develop a number. And I personally don't think it should be anything but single digit. That's just me. Of course, that's my opinion. I'm biased. That, you know, I, I have a 5% allocation. However, that's for you to decide. And that's something that you really, uh, if you are invested, that you really want to own that decision. Uh, question number four, how do you plan to respond to the extreme price fluctuations that are common in the cryptocurrency market, right? You got to get prepared mentally for this and you got to have a strategy for the volatility. That way you'll avoid those impulsive decisions. And number five, this is another, you know, the fifth and final question for you to consider. What are my criteria for evaluating the long-term potential of any cryptocurrency I'm considering investing in, right? So you really want to develop some sort of framework for investment that goes beyond just mere speculation, mere, you know, I like this, co like this coin or, you know, I, I heard my friend say that he's buying it, so I will. You really want to have a plan. You want to have a framework that allows you to choose those assets that are right for you. So let these questions serve as a compass. Let, let them guide you through the complex and fascinating world of cryptocurrency investing. But remember, you know, it, this, is a, this is a risky, risky uh, market. You know, it goes up and it goes down. And you've got to be prepared for that. You've got to be able to make informed decisions. And you really want to uh, approach this with a diversified investment strategy. So as we wrap up uh, this segment here, we want to look ahead with curiosity and caution, right? The world of digital currencies is evolving rapidly, and it's offering many new opportunities and challenges for investors. In the end, the journey of Bitcoin is not just about the destination, but about the innovation and learning it brings to the financial world. All right, stay tuned. And in our next and final segment, we're going to sum up today's discussions and leave you with some concluding thoughts to ponder. We'll be right back. friends. Well, as we bring today's exploration of the 2024 bull market and the resurgence of Bitcoin to a close, let's pause 
and reflect on the insights we've gathered. So the journey through the S&P 500's historic rise and Bitcoin's notable comeback has illuminated the complexities and opportunities of investing in today's dynamic market landscape. We've seen that whether in the equity markets or in the digital currency space, the principles of sound investing remain unchanged. Diversification, diligent research, and understanding one's risk tolerance are the cornerstones of a robust investment strategy. These time-tested principles guide us through the ebbs and flows of the market, and they provide us with a consistent approach to be used amidst volatility. Now, as we look ahead, we want to embrace the future with an informed perspective recognizing that while markets fluctuate and technologies evolve, our approach to investing must be rooted in discipline and informed decision-making. It's not about outguessing the market's every single move, but about preparing ourselves to navigate its uncertainties with confidence. And it's in this spirit that I offer you a piece of wisdom from one of the most astute minds in the investment world, Peter Lynch. Peter was the manager of the Magellan Fund at Fidelity for 13 years until his retirement at age 46 back in 1990. And during his tenure, the fund earned an annualized return of 29% under his management, more than twice what the S&P 500 earned during that time. He's also an author of the best-selling investment books, One Up on Wall Street and Beating the Street. I recommend both of these books, but let me just give you a little glimpse of his investment wisdom. When he said, far more money has been lost by investors in preparing for corrections or anticipating corrections than has been lost in the corrections themselves. Now, this insight is a powerful reminder of the folly of trying to predict the market's every turn. Instead, focus on building a resilient investment portfolio that can weather the storms, mindful that the greatest losses often stem from fear. And that's just something to think about. Well, friends, that brings us to the end of our program today. I want to thank you for joining me on this voyage through the currents of the financial markets. You know, your continued thirst for knowledge and your engagement fuel our journey together. Always feel free to reach out to me through our website at followthemoney.com. We love to hear from you. Until we meet again, keep investing wisely, thinking long-term, and remember the path to financial wisdom is paved with patience and prudence. And when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right back here next time. Until then, God bless. podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes. It should not be construed as specific investment advice. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry Robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Follow-up, individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations. Past performance is not indicative of future results. You should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion discussed on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial